Charles I of Austria or Charles IV of Hungary was, among other titles, the last ruler of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. He was the last emperor of Austria, the last king of Hungary, and the last monarch of the House of Habsburg-Lorraine. He reigned from 1916 until 1918, when he renounced participation in state affairs, but did not abdicate. He spent the remaining years of his life attempting to restore the monarchy until his death in 1922. Following his beatification by the Catholic Church, he has become commonly known as Blessed Charles of Austria. Early life Charles was born on August 17, 1887 in the castle of Pesenbug in Lower Austria. His parents were Archduke Otto Franz of Austria and Princess Maria Josepha of Saxony. At the time, his granduncle Franz Joseph reigned as Emperor of Austria and King of Hungary, and his uncle Franz Ferdinand became heir presumptive two years later. As a child, Charles was reared a devout Roman Catholic. He spent his early years wherever his father's regiment happened to be stationed. Later on he lived in Vienna and Reichenau and der Axe. He was privately educated, but, contrary to the custom ruling in the imperial family, he attended a public gymnasium for the sake of demonstrations in scientific subjects. On the conclusion of his studies at the gymnasium, he entered the army, spending the years from 1906 to 1908 as an officer chiefly in Prague, where he studied law and political science concurrently with his military duties. In 1907 he was declared of age and Prince Zdenk Olobkowicz was appointed his chamberlain. In the next few years he carried out his military duties in various Bohemian garrison towns. Charles's relations with his granduncle were not intimate, and those with his uncle not cordial, the differences between their wives increasing the existing tension between them. For these reasons, Charles, up to the time of the murder of Franz Ferdinand, obtained no insight into affairs of state, but led the life of a prince not destined for a high political position. Marriage in 1911, Charles married Princess Zita of Bourbon Palmer. They had met as children but did not see one another for almost ten years, as each pursued their education. In 1909, his dragoon regiment was stationed at Brandeis and Erilbel, from where he visited his aunt at Franzensbad. It was during one of these visits that Charles and Zita became reacquainted. Due to Franz Ferdinand's morganatic marriage in 1900, his children were excluded from the succession. As a result, the emperor severely pressured Charles to marry. Zeta not only shared Charles' devout Catholicism, but also an impeccably royal lineage. Zeta later recalled, We were of course glad to meet again and became close friends. On my side feelings developed gradually over the next two years. He seemed to have made his mind up much more quickly, however, and became even more keen when, in the autumn of 1910, rumors spread about that I had got engaged to a distant Spanish relative, Jaime, Duke of Madrid. On hearing this, the Archduke came down post-haste from his regiment at Brandeis and sought out his grandmother, Archduchess Maria Theresa, who was also my aunt and the natural confidant in such matters. He asked if the rumor was true and when told it was not, he replied, Well, I had better hurry in any case or she will get engaged to someone else. Heir presumptive, Charles became heir presumptive after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo in 1914, the event which precipitated World War I. Only at this time did the old emperor, moved by an innate sense of duty, take steps to initiate the heir presumptive to his crown and affairs of state. But the outbreak of World War I interfered with this political education. Charles spent his time during the first phase of the war at headquarters at Teschen but exercised no military influence. Charles then became a general field marshal in the Austro-Hungarian army. In the spring of 1916, in connection with the offensive against Italy, he was entrusted with the command of the 20. Corps, whose affections the heir presumptive to the throne won by his affability and friendliness. The offensive, after a successful start, soon came to a standstill. Shortly afterwards, Charles went to the Eastern Front as commander of an army operating against the Russians and Romanians. Reign Charles succeeded to the thrones in November 1916, after the death of Emperor Franz Joseph. On December 2, 1916,
he took over the title of Supreme Commander of the whole army from Archduke Frederick. His coronation occurred on December 30. In 1917, Charles secretly entered into peace negotiations with France. He employed his brother-in-law, Prince Sixtus of Bourbon Parma, an officer in the Belgian army, as intermediary. Although his foreign minister, Atoka Zernin, was only interested in negotiating a general peace which would include Germany, Charles himself went much further in suggesting his willingness to make a separate peace. When news of the overture leaked in April 1918, Charles denied involvement until French Prime Minister Georges Clemenceau published letters signed by him. This led to Zernin's resignation, forcing Austria-Hungary into an even more dependent position with respect to its seemingly wrong German ally. The Austro-Hungarian Empire was racked by inner turmoil in the final years of the war, with much tension between ethnic groups. As part of his 14 points, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson demanded that the empire allow for autonomy and self-determination of its peoples. In response, Charles agreed to reconvene the imperial parliament and allow for the creation of a confederation with each national group exercising self-governance. However, the ethnic groups fought for full autonomy as separate nations, as they were now determined to become independent from Vienna at the earliest possible moment. Foreign Minister Baron Istvan Beria N asked for an armistice based on the 14 points on October 14, and two days later Charles issued a proclamation that radically changed the nature of the Austrian state. The Poles were granted full independence with the purpose of joining their ethnic brethren in Russia and Germany in a Polish state. The rest of the Austrian lands were transformed into a federal union composed of four parts, German, Czech, South Slav, and Ukrainian. Each of the four parts was to be governed by a federal council, and Trieste was to have a special status. However, Secretary of State Robert Lansing replied four days later that the Allies were now committed to the causes of the Czechs, Slovaks and South Slavs. Therefore, autonomy for the nationalities was no longer enough. In fact, a Czechoslovak provisional government had joined the Allies on October 14 and the South Slav National Council declared an independent South Slav state on October 29, 1918. The Lansing note effectively ended any efforts to keep the empire together. One by one, the nationalities proclaimed their independence. Even before the note the national councils had been acting more like provisional governments. Charles' political future became uncertain. On October 31, Hungary officially ended the personal union between Austria and Hungary. Nothing remained of Charles' realm except the Danubian and Alpine provinces, and he was challenged even there by the German-Austrian State Council. His last prime minister, Heinrich Lamasch, advised him that it was fruitless to stay on. Proclamation of November 11 On November 11, 1918 a euro the same day as the armistice ending the war between Allies and Germania Euro Charles issued a carefully worded proclamation in which he recognized the Austrian people's right to determine the form of the state and relinquish, ed, every participation in the administration of the state. He also released his officials from their oath of loyalty to him. On the same day the imperial family left Chaparagraf NBA UNN and moved to Castle at Casse, east of Vienna. On November 13, following a visit of Hungarian magnates, Charles issued a similar proclamation for Hungary. Although it has widely been cited as an abdication, that word was never mentioned in either proclamation. Indeed, he deliberately avoided using the word abdication in the hope that the people of either Austria or Hungary would vote to recall him. Privately, Charles left no doubt that he believed himself to be the rightful emperor. Addressing Cardinal Friedrich Gustav Pifffl, he wrote, I did not abdicate, and never will. I see my manifesto of November 11 as the equivalent to a check which a street thug has forced me to issue at gunpoint. I do not feel bound by it in any way whatsoever. Instead, on November 12, the day after he issued his proclamation, the Independent Republic of German Austria was proclaimed, followed by the proclamation of the Hungarian Democratic Republic on November 16. An uneasy truce-like situation ensued and persisted until March 23, 1919, when Charles left for Switzerland, 
escorted by the commander of the small British Guard detachment at Ekkarse, Lieutenant Colonel Edward Lallstrut. As the Imperial train left Austria on March 24, Charles issued another proclamation in which he confirmed his claim of sovereignty, declaring that, whatever the National Assembly of German Austria has resolved with respect to these matters since November 11 is null and void for me and my house. Although the newly established Republican government of Austria was not aware of this manifesto of Feldkirch at this time, the politicians now in power were extremely irritated by the Emperor's departure without an explicit abdication. On April 3, 1919, the Austrian Parliament passed the Habsburg Law, which permanently barred Charles and Zeta from returning to Austria. Other Habsburgs were banished from Austrian territory unless they renounced all intentions of reclaiming the throne and accepted the status of ordinary citizens. Another law, passed on the same day, abolished all nobility in Austria. In Switzerland, Charles and his family briefly took residence at Castle Wartegg near Rochark at Lake Constance, and moved to Car saint de Prangins at Lake Geneva on May 20, 1919. Attempts to reclaim throne of Hungary Encouraged by Hungarian royalists, Charles sought twice in 1921 to reclaim the throne of Hungary, but failed largely because Hungary's regent, Mikla Cubed S. Horthy, refused to support him. Horthy's failure to support Charles' restoration attempts is often described as treasonous by royalists. Critics suggest that Horthy's actions were more firmly grounded in political reality than those of Charles and his supporters. Indeed, the neighboring countries had threatened to invade Hungary if Charles tried to regain the throne. Later in 1921, the Hungarian parliament formally nullified the pragmatic sanction Euro and act that effectively dethroned the Habsburgs. Exile in Madeira and Death After the second failed attempt at restoration in Hungary, Charles and pregnant Zeta were briefly quarantined at Shiny Abbey. On November 1, 1921 they were taken to the Hungarian Danube harbour city of Baja, made to board the British monitor HMS Glow-1, and were removed to the Black Sea where they were transferred to the light cruiser HMS A. Cardiff. They arrived in their final exile, the Portuguese island of Madeira, on November 19, 1921. Determined to prevent a third restoration attempt, the Council of Allied Powers had agreed on Madeira because it was isolated in the Atlantic and easily guarded. Originally the couple and their children lived at Funchal at the Villa Vittoria, next to Reed's Hotel, and later moved to Quinta do Monte. Compared to the imperial glory in Vienna and even at Ecarse, conditions there were certainly impoverished. Charles would not leave Madeira again. On March 9, 1922 he caught a cold walking into town and developed bronchitis, which subsequently progressed to severe pneumonia. Having suffered two heart attacks, he died of respiratory failure on April 1 in the presence of his wife and nine-year-old former Crown Prince Otto, retaining consciousness almost to the last moment. His remains except for his heart are still kept on the island, in the Church of Our Lady of Monte in spite of several attempts to move them to the Habsburg crypt in Vienna. Assessment, historians have been mixed in their evaluations of Charles and his reign. One of the most critical has been Helmut Rumpeler, head of the Habsburg Commission of the Austrian Academy of Sciences, who has described Charles as a dilettante, far too weak for the challenges facing him, out of his depth, and not really a politician. However, Others have seen Charles as a brave and honorable figure who tried as Emperor King to halt World War I. The English writer, Herbert Vivian, wrote, Karl was a great leader, a prince of peace, who wanted to save the world from a year of war. A statesman with ideas to save his people from the complicated problems of his empire. A king who loved his people, a fearless man, a noble soul, distinguished, a saint from whose grave blessings come. Furthermore, Anatole France, the French novelist, stated, Emperor Karl is the only decent man to come out of the war in a leadership position, yet he was a saint and no one listened to him. He sincerely wanted peace, and therefore was despised by the whole world. It was a wonderful chance that was lost. Field Marshal Paul von Hindenburg, who at the time of Charles' reign was the commander-in-chief of the Imperial German Army, commented in his memoirs, 
he tried to compensate for the evaporation of the ethical power which Emperor Franz Joseph had represented by offering ethnical reconciliation. Even as he dealt with elements who were sworn to the goal of destroying his empire he believed that his acts of political grace would have an impact on their conscience. These attempts were totally futile. Those people had long ago lined up with our common enemies, and were far from being deterred. Beatification, Catholic Church leaders have praised Charles for putting his Christian faith first in making political decisions, and for his role as a peacemaker during the war, especially after 1917. They have considered that his brief rule expressed Roman Catholic social teaching, and that he created a social legal framework that in part still survives. Pope John Paul II declared Charles blessed in a beatification ceremony held on October 3, 2004, and stated, The decisive task of Christians consists in seeking, recognizing and following God's will in all things. The Christian statesman, Charles of Austria, confronted this challenge every day. To his eyes, war appeared as something appalling. Amid the tumult of the First World War, he strove to promote the peace initiative of my predecessor, Benedict XV. From the beginning, the Emperor Charles conceived of his office as a holy service to his people. His chief concern was to follow the Christian vocation to holiness also in his political actions. For this reason, his thoughts turned to social assistance. The causal campaign for his canonization began in 1949, when testimony of his holiness was collected in the Archdiocese of Vienna. In 1954, the cause was opened and he was declared servant of God, the first step in the process. The League of Prayers established for the promotion of his cause has set up a website, and Cardinal Christoph Schaparograph NBORN of Vienna has sponsored the cause. Recent Milestones On April 14, 2003, the Vatican's Congregation for the Causes of Saints in the presence of Pope John Paul II, promulgated Charles of Austria's heroic virtues and he thereby acquired the title of Venerable. On December 21, 2003, the congregation certified, on the basis of three expert medical opinions, that a miracle in 1960 occurred through the intercession of Charles. The miracle attributed to Charles was the scientifically inexplicable healing of a Brazilian nun with debilitating varicose veins. She was able to get out of bed after she prayed for his beatification. On October 3, 2004, he was beatified by Pope John Paul II. The Pope also declared October 21, the date of Charles' marriage in 1911 to Princess Zita, as Charles' feast day. The beatification has caused controversy because Charles authorized the Austro-Hungarian army's use of poison gas during World War I. On January 31, 2008, a church tribunal, after a 16-month investigation, formally recognized a second miracle attributed to Charles I. In an uncommon twist, the Florida woman claiming the miracle cure was not Catholic, but Baptist. However, due to her experiences, she converted to Catholicism soon thereafter. Quotes, now, we must help each other to get to heaven. Addressing Empress Zita on October 22, 1911, the day after their wedding. I am an officer with all my body and soul but I do not see how anyone who sees his dearest relations leaving for the front can love war. Addressing Empress Zita after the outbreak of World War I. I have done my duty, as I came here to do. As crowned king, I not only have a right, I also have a duty. I must uphold the right, the dignity and honor of the crown, for me, this is not something light. With the last breath of my life I must take the path of duty. Whatever I regret, our Lord and Saviour has led me. Addressing Cardinal Janos Xernok after the defeat of his attempt to regain the Hungarian throne in 1921. The British government had vainly hoped that the Cardinal would be able to persuade him to renounce his title as King of Hungary. I must suffer like this so my people will come together again. Spoken in Madeira, during his last illness. I can't go on much longer. Thy will be done. Yes. Yes. As you will it. Jesus. Reciting his last words while contemplating a crucifix held by Empress Zeta. Official Grand Title. His Imperial and Royal Apostolic Majesty, Charles I, by the grace of God, 
Emperor of Austria, Apostolic King of Hungary, of this name the Fourth, King of Bohemia, Dalmatia, Croatia, Slavonia, and Galicia, Ludomria, and Illyria. King of Jerusalem, Archduke of Austria. Grand Duke of Tuscany and Krakow, Duke of Lorraine and of Salzburg, of Styria, of Carinthia, of Carniola and of the Bukovina. Grand Prince of Transylvania. Margrave of Moravia. Duke of Upper and Lower Silesia, of Medina, Parma, Psenza and Gostola, of Auschwitz and Zorta, of Teschen, Friuli, Ragusa and Zara. Princely Count of Habsburg and Tyrol, of Kyberg, Gorizia and Gradiska. Prince of Trent and Brixen. Margrave of Upper and Lower Lusatia and Innistria. Count of Holmems, Feldkirch, Bregenz, Sonnenberg. Lord of Trieste, of Kataro, and in the Windic March. Grand Voivode of the Voivodeship of Serbia. Children. Decorations and Awards. This article incorporates information from the equivalent article on the Italian Wikipedia. Grand Master of the following orders. Order of the Golden Fleece, Royal Order of Saint Stephen of Hungary, Military Order of Maria Theresa, Order of the Iron Crown, Order of Leopold, Order of Franz Joseph, Order of Elizabeth. Gold Medal of Military Merit, Military Cross for the 60th year of the reign of Franz Joseph, Knight of the Order of the Black Eagle, Knight Grand Cross of the Military Order of Max Joseph, Knight Grand Cross of the Military Order of Saint Henry, Paul Amar Copyright Right, Iron Cross. Bailiff Grand Cross of Honor and Devotion of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, Ancestors, see also, Otto von Habsburg, Charles' oldest son and head of the Habsburg family until 2011. Ukrainian Austrian Internment, List of Heirs to the Austrian Throne, Notes. Further reading, G. Brooke Shepherd, The Last Empress, The Life and Times of Zeta of Austria-Hungary, 1892 Euro 1989, 1991. ISBN 0-00-215861-2. Italian, Flavia Foradni, Otto Dusburgo. L'ultimo atto di una dinastia, MGS Press, Trieste, 2004. ISBN 88-89219-04-1. External links, Karl von Habsburg Lothringen, Blessed Emperor Charles League of Prayers.